Way over here. But I get emails from YouTube telling me to take a break, so. Okay. What's that, Poppy? Oh my Chat Chat Alright, so we're gonna break every setting down one by one going in depth to make sure you guys have exactly what you need So obviously this is gonna start out for controller players what I use is stick and move flipped So not only do I use stick and move flip, but this is essential for me to slide with L2 in circle You're probably wondering how do you do that? Well, if you don't want to use the custom button layout that Call of Duty offers, you can go to your settings, go to accessibility, go to controllers, custom button assignments for DualSense wireless controller, then you enable custom button assignments. So at that point, you're going to end up going over to, this is going to be L2, you switch it to circle, and then you're going to hit apply. That way, when you slide, you're going to be able to actually slide with L2. So just to give an idea. It's so much smoother, especially when you're playing stick and move and your slide button is circle. You can just use that back L2 button and you'll be good to go. But that doesn't end there. We have so much more to show you. So one of the main things is also flip L1, L2, R1, R2. I mean, that's uh, I mean pretty obvious. Make sure you have the controller vibration off. I think a lot of people don't really pay attention to this, but when you have controller vibration on, every time this controller vibrates, your aim is gonna be thrown off. You may not think so, but this does not help your aim in any way, shape, or form. You're much better off with this off so you can do much better. There's also trigger effect. A lot of people have the full haptics on. You do not need the full haptics on. In fact, if you are shooting with L2, R2, I mean, well, L2, R2, then you're most likely actually getting a worse performance than if you just had this off. That way, when you're shooting, aiming down, you know, pushing down the button, there's no resistance, you'll just be good to go. Dead zone inputs. The people that have stick drift, I for one know that I have stick drift. So, what I do is I test this, and I usually like to, if it's a left or right, sit it to around uh, 15. The base is 10, set it to around 15, and at max, if you can actually save your controller, you need to set it to around 18. Now, I don't really recommend going to 2025 because at that point, the, the controller is done for. You just need to get a new controller. But 10 to 15, you'll be good to go and you'll actually do much better. So you'll have no longer any stick trip, you'll be okay. Now for aiming, horizontal and vertical sensitivity are the same for me. Now if you're a sniper, you can set your horizontal to about two points higher than your vertical. That way your shot is still straight, but it's a lot faster. Now this, for me, at least makes my recoil control a whole lot easier. Now a whole lot of people like to mess with the ADS sensitivity multiplier. In my opinion, this is not a good idea. You should leave this alone and set this to one. Just leave it alone, don't do anything to it. Also leave everything else here alone, you don't need to touch this. We are gonna mess with something, but it's not this. Also vertical aim axis, you do not need to touch these. In my opinion, if you touch these, you're just gonna be much better, well, much worse off. Attack stand sensitivity multiplier. This is also something you can leave alone. It's the equivalent of that. You just need to leave it alone. Aim response curve type. I have this set to dynamic. Believe me, this is a much smoother gameplay. Some people have said if you lower this, that'll actually help your aim assist a whole lot more. I don't think that that's actually statistically proven. I don't think that there's much resources that actually prove that. So in my opinion, I would leave the aim response slurp, well, aim response curve slope scale alone. I just think you'll do worse if you actually lower it. So dynamic is ideal. If you have it set to standard, set it to a uh, dynamic and you'll have much smoother gameplay. Next, for the ADS sense multiplier focus. So this is when you're ADSing. ADSing is the essential thing, not when you're just walking around, hip firing anything. When you're ADSing, set to point 80. This will give you much stickier aim assist. In fact, the aim assist is gonna be so sticky that you're not gonna really be able to lose a target. This is ideal and I think that you should stick to this. Anybody, it doesn't matter what your sensitivity is, it doesn't matter you know, how good or bad you are, pro, amateur, you need to set your ADS sense multiplier to 0.80. The aim assist is going to be absolutely deadly. Now you can leave these alone. You don't really need to touch these. Target aim assist, make sure you have that on no matter what your noob friend that says they play without aim assist on tells you. Do not listen to them because if you have target aim assist off, you're just not gonna do good. 
Black Ops. Now, the aim assist type Black Ops is so amazing. I recommend it to everybody, whether you're a red gunner, sniper, whatever. Don't set it to default. I mean, default is the default setting, but Black Ops is much stickier aim assist. I know some people like using precision and focusing, but this is going to be much worse for when you're actually facing multiple enemies. You would think that it would actually do better, but no, you're just going to end up in a situation where you're locked onto one enemy and not able to shift to another. You don't really need to mess with this motion sensor behavior and make sure you have that off. You don't even need to get into that advanced setting. Now for the gameplay, make sure you have automatic attack sprint. You're going to start out with most likely automatic sprint or off. I would recommend automatic attack sprint so you can get right into a slide cancel. Uh, this is left alone. This is left alone. Random mantle. I mean, I'm very <laughs> impartial about that. Uh, automatic airborne mantle set to partial. Automatic ground mantle hang is set to off. Now, I feel very iffy about the mantle. In fact, I've gotten in situations where I basically died just because I had the mantle. So if I can avoid mantling, I will. Now the slide and dive behavior. A lot of people have tap the slide. If you have tap the slide, what's gonna end up happening is you're not gonna have a perfect Modern Warfare slide cancel. I'm talking the Modern Warfare 2019 slide cancel if you have tap the slide because it's still going to register a dive. It's gonna see, do you wanna slide, do you wanna dive? If you have a set to slide only, then you're only going to be able to slide, which means you're going to be able to do the slide cancels effortlessly. Next is the plunging underwater. You actually should have this to free, so you can basically move wherever you want to. If you have trigger, then it's going to be a little more complicated. This is more so for Warzone anyway. I don't really know many maps in multiplayer that have uh, water. So these things are kind of like Warzone centric. The sprinting door bash, make sure you have that on. If you don't have that on, it's just gonna be stupid you're not gonna you're not gonna be in good situations like what's the point of not having this on not being able to bash through a door uh slide cancel sprint obviously these things you don't really need to mess with you know these things are all essentially you're leaving alone now interact reload behavior prioritize interaction this is my opinion the best possible choice just because when you're playing warzone it's actually essential to be able to just tap to pick the certain things up now the one downside is when you're playing multiplayer you might be in a situation where it'll make you pick up a gun instead of reloads so if you have this on make sure you're holding for your reloads also for armor plate behavior make sure you're applying all it just makes so much more sense than apply one you have to hold it for a lot longer if you apply one if you apply all you just hold it one time and then you're good to go Everything else is pretty easy. I mean, you don't need to change these things. And also, one more thing I would like to show you guys, even though it's not controller settings, I would love to show you the graphic settings that you guys absolutely need. Motion blur off. Weapon motion blur off. Film grain, film grain down. Make sure you have depth of field off. If you're playing on a PS5, Fidelity, FX, uh, CAS, you don't need this to 100. You genuinely don't. If you want it to 100, you can, but in my opinion, you should have it to at least, I would say, 45. In fact, I think that 100 might be a little detrimental in some cases. So it's whatever you want to do, whether you want to have it 45, 100, whatever is fine. Now, I, I don't mess with the eco mode. In fact, it has no impact on performance or visual quality while in gameplay, as it says. So in my opinion, leave that alone. 120 hertz refresh rate have it on i mean if you don't have it on you're just goofy for not having additional frames fov i said to 120 if you're playing competitive you should have it to around 100 to 90 just because you don't it's not about actually being all flashy and like having it look cool you want to actually be able to see your targets and take them down easier also when you lower the fov the targets look like they're moving slower they aren't actually moving slower but they look like they're moving slower so affected narrow make sure you guys have this on another big thing that people don't pay attention to first per first person and third person camera movement set them to least 50 percent you do not want these at default 100 it's going to make you shake way more you do not want to shake you want to have as least shake as possible inverted flashbang i don't think you should have that on i just don't think it's ideal uh, everything else is pretty much done i mean game perspective instead of helmet camera uh, brightness I didn't change and then safe area I didn't change that's all personal preference but that is everything also for the audio I mean I have it the headphones that is personal preference you guys can change anything else that you want to